18. Here, I would start asking you, Californians, just where were the fires? <laughs> and how close were they to the area north of Santa Barbara? Well, they they missed that. Especially that they did. Well, this time I want to thank all of you for taking time and your busy lives to come to this meeting. And I'd like to bring you up to date on two of the most important issues facing, I think, the country today the search for peace in the Middle East and our efforts to provide for the defense of the free world through a, a strategic defense initiative, which I am more and more starting to call the Strategic Space Shield to counter Star Wars. Good, 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 good. Yesterday I had a very successful meeting with Prime Minister Perez of Israel, and last month I met with both Jordan's King Hussein and Egypt's President Mubarak. I don't think I'll be having that repeated that second meeting for <laughs> The uh, central theme in all of those meetings was how we could work together to achieve a just and lasting peace in the Middle East. We've been working closely with King Hussein to bring Jordan and hopefully the Palestinians into direct negotiations with Israel. And despite the recent bombing and hijacking incidents, we continue to believe that the opportunity for peace is still there and it must be exploited before it slips from our grasp. Hussein's efforts have already created enormous risks for him personally as well as for Jordan. He needs the visible public commitment of U.S. support, both military and political, signaled by the sale of U.S. defensive arms in order to withstand the pressure from Syria and radical Arab groups and to continue with the next stages of the peace process. The United States remains firmly committed to supporting Israel's security. In the long run, however, that security will always be in danger, unless and until we can help both sides achieve a peaceful resolution of this conflict. And the road ahead is immensely difficult and will require imagination, courage, and flexibility from all the parties. Our aim is to help create the conditions which will lead to a lasting Middle East peace, and I'm fully committed to that goal, and so is the entire administration. Our intent of a strategic defense initiative, our brightest hope for a more secure future is to find a way to move to an increased reliance on defensive systems that destroy weapons rather than threaten people. And our immediate goal is to neutralize the threat of offensive ballistic nuclear missiles. Eventually, we hope to make them obsolete. 
Now, we seek a way to make deterrence of war more stable and enduring. And if we must compete, why not compete to keep the peace rather than compete to build weapons whose only use is to destroy us and our civilizations? <coughs> Finally, I want to emphasize that the United States did not invent the concept of strategic defense. The Soviet Union has long had a vigorous program of both research and development in this area. Rather than detailing their program here, I commend to you a publication that is recently released by the State and Defense Departments on Soviet strategic defense programs, and that is its title. It will be enlightening reading, and it's available, no charge. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before I have to leave, I want to ask for your active support for our efforts. Your views and opinions are important, and I know that I can, can count on you for that. But we're having problems up in the Congress. Uh, well, with, with both of these, but particularly with the Jordan arms sale. And they need to be encouraged. But King Hussein has really, he has been a tremendously strong man in this. And uh, I don't think he is beguiled anymore by Arafat and the Palestinians that he's received some eye-openers in the last uh, several weeks himself. And I know that Perez is ready, as he made plain to us, to go into negotiations immediately. But Hussein is the one who's threatened from behind uh, by the position that he's taken. And that has been, become more evident in these last few days with these recent effort, incidents. And this effort to prevent us from meeting some of his safety requirements uh, must not be allowed to, to succeed. I think it will. I think it's. It's the honorable thing to do, we should do it, and I think it keeps him in the peace process and makes, well, for example, by the time that we could get the weapons to him, uh, I believe that he will already be in the go direct negotiations with regard to peace, and then that would prove our conviction about this, because those weapons aren't like a package from the supermarket, they're not going to be delivered day after tomorrow if the Congress votes on them. We, we can use your help. Got it. Well, I see you got me scheduled to move on here. I'm have some discussion. But, uh, I've had a saying I've made, maybe some of you have heard me say it before then, with regard to your contacts with the Congress, it isn't necessary to make them see the light. Just feel the heat. Center for Public Affairs, a fellow by the name of Ronald Reagan, was 
was governor, even though Pat Brown uh, took credit, credit for that for it. And it's, it's just past Foothill College. It's a magnificent site. What it is is the, is the old Marino uh, <coughs> uh, missionary, uh, uh, missionary center. And they, they have 30 acres. Uh, Martin has the, uh, Martin has